G'day, it's Blue Boy here again, down on the lake. A lovely afternoon sunshine with golden hour. Today, we're gonna do a review of the Z-Pax Hexamid Solo Plus 10. <laughs> Stay tuned. So let's get into the review. Let's first set it up. Well, here's the tent set up, sort of. It's been very windy here, and this is a good example of one of the things I don't like about this tent, and that is it's not easy to set up. Look, I've spent a bit of time doing it, and it is windy. But man, I don't know if you can. <laughs> That's the best I could do in the wind and the conditions. It is a very tricky, tricky, ricky tent to set up. It's like main reason, look, let's have a look inside here, there it is, it looks quite nice, it looks nice and high that side with all the mesh floor, which makes it very good in summer and very breezy and you'll be surprised to see actually how durable this floor is, they've been sold for about 10 years these excellent tents by Joe and they have held up incredibly well. Um, they do pick up leaves and sticks and stuff, but they, they very rarely get holes in them. So, but uh, one of the tricky things about this tent, this headroom, is that the pole is on a real sharp angle, and that makes all the geometry very tricky. So, like that end of the tent is really high, sort of, and this one's way too low. It's like it's down on the ground, though. the wind's blowing it down there. Um, yeah, so that's one of the very challenging things about this tent is it is a it is a beast it is a painful tent to set up and get right you're often going to muck around with it and look at that it looks very i haven't done a good job okay so while we're on the things i don't like the other thing i don't like is how low this um door is you know like it's actually got an inbuilt like awning like or, or lip lip and so that's why the the door is so low it's only like almost 76 centimeters high so you've sort of got to duck up and under to get inside the door yeah so like that's how I'm high my knees and the door's much much uh, not much higher so you got to sort of duck up and get in under the door so if you zip up the you zip this up, zip, 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 zip. You got like this amazing mesh. Like, you feel like you're naked. You feel like you are close to nature with this sort of mesh screen on the door and the sides and the floor. And so it is really good, I reckon, for summer, this tent, if you can set it up. Um, so that's the second thing I don't really like about it. Um, but what do I like about it? It's uh, got lots of headroom, so heaps of headroom. Even though, even if I've set it up real, really dodgy, man, that wind is blowing a gale, isn't it? Woo! Cuban fibre is quite noisy, but heaps of headroom um, and heaps of space in here when it's not like poorly set up. Um, yeah. So, I do like how much space it's got when it's set up properly, anyway. Um, but you need a, like a bathtub floor to put in here, so let's go and put that in. So there's a couple of different options, as, as you can see, there's no mesh so if it's wet you're going to get wet on the floor so you've got a couple of options the first is just a straight bathtub floor which is that little one it's only about 90 grams it's a single size or this is a um, like solo plus size that's a solo plus size this is a solo plus so it's a bit bigger a bit wider and it also has got a hood in it so you can use it as a poncho so um, I've customized this 
attempt to uh, maximise or utilise this one quite well. So I'll show you what that one looks like. Okay, let's uh, set it up. So, is that one? So I use this big one, and this is the poncho. So look, like there's the hood. You can stick your head through there. You got a zipper there, so you can use it as a poncho. It goes over yourself and your pack, with, and your arms to open free. So you put that on the ground. You put the poncho head down, and hope water doesn't come up through the hole. And then you basically clip in the corners. So there's like little hooks in the corners, and then you like clip it into the elastic in the corners here. So I've done those two corners, what done the back. And then you can even do this, uh, there's one loop around the front here. I don't remember how that works. Like that, I think. Just pull that there. And then with the hood you can probably just like twist it around a bit. And then lie on it. Like that. So here we go. Here is the bathtub floor. And it sort of works. This one works, so it's a little bit high, a little bit high. I've actually got, I've attached uh, like um, loops into the pullouts there so that you can I attach another elastic to like help keep the bathtub head up. And I've also done the same thing here. You can, uh, I think that loop was already there, but I've attached it to the roof there so you can. Um, Keep the side wall up as well, um, and then same down, same down here. Now this ends of the disaster, it's all on the ground, so there's no like height. It needs to be up high like that. But um, yeah, so that's one of the downsides of this tent. You get the the the, uh, uh, the fly pitch wrong or badly or poorly, and then the rest of it's just flat on the floor. So it sort of holds up, and then you got this. Like this, there's uh, quite a lot of space. You can actually store gear on this side, like out on the mesh, like your wet pack or shoes and stuff. And, and also a little bit the same here. Like if you zip everything up, if we zip all, all this up now, you've got sort of like area between the bathtub, like bathtub and here, so you can put shoes and wet stuff, and even you can fit the pack in there and stuff like that at the front. So uh, plenty of room. So 1.5 person tent for person plus gear. Um, cool thing is when you're lying down, as you can see, sleeping or looking out, you've got good visibility, you know, and not, not many people can see in as well. So, and this black mesh helps um, keep you private as well. Um, so, yeah, that's a good thing. I like the camo color here. Um, the storm doors here, so you can pull one down and leave the other one up or whatever, but mostly, unless it's really raining, raining a gale, you can keep them both up. Like, I remember sleeping on, waking up one morning, my face was just like right here, and the mesh is right here, and I had like a thousand big massive march flies, which are these like killer blowflies, come flying into here, trying to bang into my face to get my, must have smelt me, or um, you could feel the, yeah, detect the carbon dioxide coming from me because they were like going for me and it's like this thing was right in my face. It was like the most awesome bug shield ever. So, uh, but it allows me, allowed me to stay close to, uh, connected to the environment that I was camping in. Okay. So, there you go. That's a bit of an overview of the Hexamid Solo Plus um, tent. Um, it is good. Good for stealth camping, and yeah. So there's the Hexamid Solo Plus tent, the one and a half person tent from z -Packs that has now just been superseded by the Plexamid, which had a sewn-in bathtub floor. Um, let's start off as a summary. What do I like about the tent? Uh, I love the color, love the uh, camo. Um, I like how big it is. It's got uh, plenty of room. Um, yeah, that's, that's the main thing that I like about it. I, I, it's quite light. Uh, I think it's about 440 to 460 grams without the floor. Add the floor in, it's another 100 to 140 grams, depending on your model, uh, like what, what floor you put in there, the bathtub floor. So it's pretty light. 
Um, and yeah, I, it's also what I do like with this colour particularly, and with this sort of covered over um, awning, or this sort of like front on it, beak, um, is that it's very um, discreet and very stealth. And that's why I like sort of got it in this colour too. So it's probably the most stealthy, stealthy camo camp uh, tent you can get. Because uh, you don't even have a doorway that you're sort of looking in, the doorway's real low and it's black like that, so it's extra stealthy. So if you're camping, then you shouldn't be camping. Um, so there's a couple of things that I like about it. What don't I like about it? One, man, it's difficult to set up. It's the geometry, you just gotta like be perfect with it. And if it's in the wind like I had it today, it's very difficult. Um, two, what I don't like about it is the in. Um, I don't mind the actual mesh tent, the mesh floor like that. I, I don't actually quite mind that. Um, but I don't like having to click in or clip in this bathtub floor. The, the little clips in the corners, they're really painful to get in, on and off. Um, you can just leave it in there and then take it out. But anytime you have to take it in and out, you just go, I hate this. Um, the advantage of having a removable floor is you can cowboy camp you know, without the tent, just the floor. Or you can dry the floor and the tent um, fast or by having it separated and under the sun or whatever. Um, but I just, it's just a bit more painful than I'd like. So I don't like that. Um, I don't like how low the, the door is. It's, it's sort of difficult to get in and out. Uh, also, even though it is one and a half uh, person tent, right, so enough, person, enough uh, space for a person plus the gear, with the bathtub floor here, there's not really a whole lot of space here on this front bit and not a whole lot of space at the back bit. And even if there is a bit of space, it's quite low. So the usable space is not really that usable unless you've got the twin uh, bathtub floor that you can't get anymore. Um, and when that would take up the whole sort of surface area of the floor, that would probably solve that problem. Um, another downside, slight downside, is the when it's wet and, and sticky and muddy, the, the, the mesh floor does tend to pick that up, so that's not so hot. Um, would I keep it long term? I'm still debating whether I do or not. Um, just the hassle of having it set up is, is not good. I've got the Plexibin now in the blue, so I think that's going to be a much more pleasurable tent to use uh, long term and own. So I think the Plexibin is probably a good upgrade, although this does have this lots of advantages Stealthy inbuilt beak, removable floor that you can double as your poncho so you can save weight there and stuff as well. So it does come at a cost of less usable space and um, more fiddly to set up and more fiddly to put the floor in and out. So that's my review so far. Hope you like it. Blue Boy out.